Welcome at another episode of Channel Let's Talk. Today we are with Professor Dominic Onra. He is a professor of cryptography and the head of the chair of security and theoretical uh, computer science. So good morning, sir. Good morning. So well, first of all, uh, I would like to ask you, like, what exactly University of Tartu wants to see in their students when they are applying for the for the IT department or um, I mean, I can mostly speak for um, what I would personally uh, like to see, but I guess that it's kind of similar uh, throughout. Mm -hmm. um, so, when a student is applying, it would be usually a, a mixture of prior background and motivation. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the student especially when applying for master which continues uh, it is important to have already had um, a good education on the bachelor level um, but in addition I think it is important to know what what you want and to make clear in the motivation letter um, why you want computer science why you want Tartu and what your strengths are I'm sure you have evaluated a lot of applications so, what are the like most important uh, factors which, when you are trying to evaluate an application, you want to see there in that application? Mm -hmm. Well, I personally um, find it very important um, to see some strong, some evidence of strength also in mathematics and not just mm -hmm. in um, applied areas of computer science. Mm -hmm. Naturally, because I'm representing the chair of security and theoretical computer science. Mm -hmm. So these are um, things that are often not as strongly represented and therefore if someone has strengths in that area I see that as a big bonus. Mm -hmm. So what is the role of the uh, experience they have? Like a person who has already graduated and then he did a lot of uh, work in the market and then he applied for the masters or PhD over here. So mm -hmm. what do you think, how, what could be the role of that experience? Um, that depends again um, on the motivation. So it's useful to explain in the motivation letter how that fits in and what your goals are. So there should be a match. So for example, if you have um, a lot of experience as a programmer you should not you should try to sell this as what it is mm -hmm. uh, but not try to sell it as for example experience in mathematics or something like this mm -hmm. so um, point of those strengths is it is uh, something uh, valuable um, but one should be realistic when representing it as uh, to explain which qualifications one has gained from it and not try to imagine others that one hasn't gained from it because everything has pros and contras and one should focus on the things that are really the, the realistic pros. Mm -hmm. So as we are talking about the a motivation letter, so mostly students find themselves like a, in a kind of a dilemma when they are trying to portray okay how we should start this thing and uh, what exactly we should portray in that uh, motivation letter. So can you give a kind of uh, imaginary s structure which you would like to have in, your, in the student's motivation letter? Mm -hmm. Well, what I would see is um, that the student explains um, what is fascinating about computer science, so why are they interested, mm -hmm. while avoiding some stereotypical um, storylines of the kind like when I was a child I saw my first computer when in my dad's office and uh, th these uh, kind of things are very common and they're usually not of interest to the evaluator what happened in the childhood so it's more about what is interesting now and why and which areas and wh what do I see that I would be able to do with um, the things I learn in the master so if the student has a, a good idea what this is for Mm -hmm. and what they can uh, do with it. Um, that is usually something that makes the motivation much stronger than just some kind of childhood experiences or other nice sounding but not really informative uh, motivation letters. Mm -hmm. 
But when they are trying to apply for a cryptography or mm -hmm. uh, let's suppose in your research group, so what kind of background knowledge they should have about the cryptography before they applying here? Mm -hmm. Well, specifically for um, my research area, as I said, um, be, the better you are at mathematics, mm -hmm. the better. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, here we usually start teaching cryptography mostly on the master's level anyway. So we don't expect a background in cryptography specifically, mm -hmm. but um, cryptography is a very analytical field. So um, the ability to think logically is very important and that's something that um, is especially trained if you if you are good at mathematics but of course you can think logically anyway mm -hmm. okay so when uh, the students they are coming over here and uh, want to study cryptography so what kind of expectations they should have uh, from university of tartu or especially like what kind of uh, courses you are teaching him mm -hmm. so um we have here quite a, uh, quite some strength mm -hmm. in the area of um, more, uh, more theoretical cryptography, so foundations of it and so on, mm -hmm. as applied to uh, applied cryptography where you actually, um, I don't know, protect the system, install a uh, public key infrastructure or something like this. So what we are teaching is research level um, foundations of cryptography. Mm -hmm. um, why do things work? Um, how can we prove the security of systems and so on. So this is what, where our strength is lie. Mm -hmm. So after uh, what you think, what a student should have in their mind, like when they uh, come and study cryptography here and after that they are looking for their career here in Estonia. So what are the most key factors which are really important to learn here? I think as long as you learn something that is um, um, generally relevant and that has, uh, has depth, mm -hmm. then it's probably not that um, important for finding a job what it was specifically. Mm -hmm. so, I, um, so for example, even if you would start a job with um, more applied where more applied cryptographic skills are needed um, and you have learned more theoretical ones for example this is very valuable because you um, you will have um, certain insights beyond the surface that you wouldn't get uh, otherwise mm -hmm. so I mean I can't speak for the employers I am not uh, a, an employer in industry but I would expect that what is most important is that the student has learned, uh, has shown the ability to get into topics that are not uh, trivial, repetitive uh, topics, but uh, deeper things. And then I'm not sure it matters that much which um, area it is. So I would go for the thing that that is interesting and not specifically by targeting like one concrete employer or something like this. In the field, uh, the job market is good enough that one doesn't have to fight against people who are extremely targeted to one specific job or something like this. Let's say, like, what kind of potential uh, we have here in Estonian market so people can, like, go and uh, find a kind of a right job for their, what they learned in previous years. So, I don't know the statistics and other hard data so well, so I can only talk by um, hear, uh -huh. or what hearsay, what I uh -huh. hear. And um, from what I hear, as a computer science student, you tend not to have any problems finding a job. Okay, so well, uh, if we talk about the PhD students, mm -hmm. so uh, when they are applying, so uh, what kind of uh, projects you see in future which would be available here in Tartu University or especially under your supervision? Mm -hmm. So my area is, uh, my current main focus is quantum cryptography and formal verification. Mm -hmm. 
So quantum cryptography is cryptography in, in the age of quantum computers and formal verification refers to the fact that we uh, want to verify our security proofs with the computer to make sure that there are no mistakes. Both areas are highly, um, highly mathematical. Mm -hmm. So when I look for PhD students, I, would, I usually look, um, look most at their mathematical background. Mm -hmm. Of course, if I know them personally, from lectures, for example, then it's, it can be very, very helpful too to evaluate um, if they are suited for the position. So if someone wants to become a PhD student, what I recommend is to seek some contact with um, potential supervisors early to mm -hmm. take their courses, to be in seminars, to take uh, projects with them mm -hmm. in order to build up a contact because it's much easier um, that way to get a PhD position than to apply out of the blue. So if I would get an application letter from someone from my own uh, institute okay. I have never heard of, then I would think, so why do, are they going in my area if they have been doing the whole studies in a different direction? Uh -huh. Okay, so there is one more factor, which is like uh, internships. Mm -hmm. So uh, how many like students you people get here in, in your group? Uh, from third world countries, like uh, not from the Europe, but like from East or like from West or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so as far as I know, we do not have a, an established internship program, mm -hmm. which means that getting interns is rather tricky because one has to go through all the um, documents, or, mm -hmm. documents and so on. So that puts a certain hurdle on it. So I did not have an an intern uh, yet because I didn't get any applications. Let it be our last question. Like what kind of message you want to give uh, to the students uh, who are like newcomers and uh, who are trying to apply in future here at UT or especially at your group or department? Mm. Basically mostly the things I've said so far. Um, yeah, that would study, be great. Study the <laughs> things um, that that sounds like something you, you would enjoy actually to do. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, don't drop the things that are necessary requirements, um, even if they are not so fascinating. Sometimes to reach a fascinating subject, you need to go through a <coughs> less enjoyable one. So that's mm -hmm. something one has to do as well. But basically just try to try to see the beautiful things behind the topics and um, then do them. Well, thank you very much. And one more thing is like uh, we are going to put your uh, research group link in the description of the video. So mm -hmm. uh, people would know this thing and maybe they will be uh, try to contact as well. Yeah. So yeah, we are really thankful to you and it's, okay. it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much.